everybody, welcome. This is Big Anklevich here, and uh, this is Anklecast number three. I'm on my way to work, and uh, yeah, what do I have to talk about today? Let's see, first of all, uh, it's been a week or so since I'm back from the new Media Expo. Um... So, I guess when it comes down to it, I have no further excuses for myself. Um, I've blogged about all the things that I'm going to blog about in relation to that, I think. Uh, I guess in the future still, I do have a recording of our panel that I will probably put up. That one may actually be on the main Dune Steve account, not just on my blog or both. I don't know. Uh, The folks at the New Media Expo tell me that they have recordings of all the stuff that uh, was done at the New Media Expo, and so perhaps there's a really nice recording that comes from the actual mics we were speaking into uh, out there that I might be able to share with you. Um, I'm working on trying to get that so you guys can listen to our panel, and I also would like to get the one that went to uh, Marshall and uh, Renee and everybody's panel. Um, and by everybody, I guess I mean Brian Lincoln, because that's the only other person, Marshall, Renee, and Brian. Uh, uh, but yeah, that uh, is in the future. Um, and who knows when that will come. But that's all there is left to say about the uh, New Media Expo, other than, you know, we'll be back there again next year. And... Uh, if you'd like to meet us or if you'd like to learn how to make a fiction podcast or if you'd like to learn how to monetize your blog, uh, then, you know, mark that on your calendar for next year. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more people, uh, some more awesome podcasters from the fiction realm to show up and do some uh, some presentations. Um, but anyways, yeah, like I said, I have no excuse anymore. It's been a week since I've been home. And I've only managed to put in time uh, on my story, like, one of those seven days. Um, I'm, I'm frustrated with myself. I, I have several times thought, I need to write right now. Now is the time for me to write. And I just think, that's work. I know I made this goal and I told everybody about it and um but they're probably not going to call me on it anyway so who cares and I'm and I don't do it and Rish keeps calling me on it even he sends me a an I am or whatever every single day saying hey dude I'm here to remind you of the mess you made when you went away and also you need to write uh all that kind of stuff and I'm I'm still managing to avoid it Um, So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story that I'm trying to work on right now, and uh, if it sounds like a story you'd be interested in reading, because seriously, when I'm done writing it, I will send it to anyone who wants to read it. You can read it, you can give me all your comments on it, and I will take your comments into consideration as a loud car driving past. I'm sure you heard that one. I'll take your comments into consideration and uh, improve the story by way of them. And, uh, yeah, if I can ever get it written, uh, I just need a little encouragement, I guess. But, yeah, I'm going to tell you about the story, and you can, uh, if if it sounds like something you'd like, then bug me about it. Make a comment saying, hey, you can do it. And then every time I put something on on the blog, say, hey, what about that story? How's it coming? Um, maybe I need to make myself a deadline, too. What is today? Today is like the 17th, 17th of January. Now, I have a feeling the story's going to be really long, um, judging from my outline. Maybe the longest story I've ever written, if I manage to get it done. Uh, We'll talk about an outline after I tell you about the story. Uh, So anyways, the story is called Sunny and Gray. Sunny and Gray are the main characters, Sunflower and Rob Gray. Um, 
So the story is about, it starts out with a boy who, this is Rob, but, but at the time that he's a boy, he's called Bobby because that's what he's called Little, Little Roberts. Um, he goes to a little glade in the forest. He lives uh, in kind of rural, not rural, but very edge of suburban Denver. He goes to a glade in the forest area that's kind of nearby. And he's a, a little unusual, this kid. He likes playing in the outdoors. He's not so into things like, um, you know, video games and and Twitter and uh, that kind of stuff that kids are into more uh, these days. He's a little unusual among his classmates. Um, so anyways, he goes out into the forest and he's playing out there. He's got a butterfly net. And uh, he wants to catch himself some bugs with his butterfly net. He goes to this pond where there's lots of flying insects. And he's trying to catch them. And he specifically wants to catch a dragonfly because everybody knows dragonflies are awesome. He catches a dragonfly. And he's sticking his hands down into his net to try and get this dragonfly. And he gets bit. And the bite is way more than... Uh, you know, way, a way bigger deal than just a bite from a dragonfly should be. Um, and when he comes out of this uh, stupor, I guess, or freak out, whatever you want to call it, that the uh, bite puts him into, he sees fairies flying around everywhere. The bite from this dragonfly has opened his eyes to the fairy world. He looks down at his hands, or he looks down at the the dragonfly that's in the net, and he sees that it's not a dragonfly at all, but it's it's a little fairy, and that's what bit him. And the bite from the fairy has opened his eyes to the fairy world. So now he sees dead people. I mean, no, he sees fairies. And, um... He tells this poor fairy that he was about to uh, pummel by way of trying to take it out of this net, that he's sorry, he didn't know that it was a fairy, he thought it was just a bug and he didn't mean to hurt it. He lets it loose and it flies up and he smiles at it and the fairy smiles back and it maybe like does a loop-de-loop around his head or whatever and then flies away. And so anyways, this boy keeps coming back to this glade, and he, and he keeps seeing this fairy again and again, and he's becoming more, you know, he's learning more about fairies and all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, he teaches this fairy more and more about humans, uh, until eventually, by the time this boy has come of age, and now he's Rob, the fairy, whose name is Sunflower, or Sunny for short, Um, has changed. Every time she learns more about being a human, she becomes more like a human. And by the time he is done, uh, or by the time he comes of age, this uh, fairy is now basically indistinguishable from a human. And these two have fallen in love in their time um, that they've spent together. And uh, Rob decides to bring this fairy, Sunny, back with him to his house and bring her into the human world. And so he does. It's kind of a media craziness storm because, you know, uh, this girl just comes out of the woods. No one knows who her parents are, you know, and he has, they have to deal with that. And, you know, Rob tells the fairy, you know, just, you know, say you don't know what happened. And they manage to... Uh, get by with that and tell the media leave them alone when the story gets boring and there's another shooting somewhere or something I don't know um and yeah they uh, eventually get married and the more and more time that Sunny spends with humans the more and more human she becomes until at a certain point she is human she's not a fairy anymore And for a while, she can still see fairy things, and she can still remember fairy things, but eventually, even that goes away, and she even forgets that she ever was 
a fairy. And uh, she becomes more and more like a human and, and more and more normal, more and more uninteresting, really. And Rob, you know, he loves his wife and he's upset at this uh, development. He, one day, He's uh, talking, he's sitting in his kitchen with his wife, and she's, I don't know, unloading the dishwasher. And then all of a sudden, a gremlin jumps out of their cupboard and knocks a plate from his wife's hand. She drops it on the floor, it breaks, and he's like, man. And she's like, oh, shoot, I dropped that. And, and Rob says, oh, you, you know, it's not your fault. You saw the gremlin that knocked it out of your hand. Or he says, I don't know, stupid gremlins, I hate them, or something. She's like, gremlins? What are you talking about? And he's like, you saw the gremlin that knocked it out of your hand? And she's like, so Rob, what are you talking about? That's silly, a gremlin. And he realizes that she didn't see the gremlin, that she doesn't see them, that she's not a fairy, she doesn't know anything about it, and it kind of freaks him out. And for years, she's been getting more and more like a wife will be after many, many years. You know, they they kind of drift apart, and this guy and, you know, Rob and Sonny are now just kind of your standard suburban married couple that is feeling smothered, feeling like there's nothing left, you know, they're, they've had kids, and their kids have grown old, and now they're, they, you know, they don't need them so much anymore, and and they're realizing that after all these years, they've forgotten what it meant to be in love with each other, and they they don't ever have sex anymore, and all those kind of things that that happen. And and Rob is just so upset by this, and and he realizes that she is not a fairy anymore. She doesn't even remember being a fairy, and he he feels really bad that it's basically his fault. And so he goes out on a quest to make her a fairy again and I'm not going to go any further um, on this story because it would give away the ending and all that stuff and it would make it uh, uncool um, but yeah that's the story that I'm working on Sonny and Gray kind of a bit of a I don't know it's like an indulgence in <laughs> sexual fantasies as well as uh, you know, an indulgence in sexual frustrations or whatever, this whole thing, but that's kind of the story that I am trying to work on. I've been outlining it, um, and that's one of the things that maybe is daunting me, maybe keeping me from wanting to work on it. As I outline the story, I realize it's going to be huge, it's going to be super long, and uh, maybe full novella, maybe like 40,000 words or something by the time I'm done. I'm afraid that that's the way it's going to be, and I'm afraid that I'll run out of steam. So I really need encouragement from anyone who can give it to me, because I've never written anything that long. I do have a tendency to write things longer than perhaps they need to be when I write stories. Um, but yeah, this one's going to be really long. It's going to be, it could even possibly be a, a novel. Uh, when it's done, because I think you know, 50,000 words, what uh, they try and get you to write in a month from NaNoWriMo, and they call that a novel, so it's a short novel, I guess. So it's possible it may even be that. Um, but anyways, that's my story. I've uh, outlined kind of the first little bit, um, you know, what Rob and the fairy talk about as they're learning uh, each other's worlds, and and stuff. I think I need to add in uh, some scenes in between the scenes of Robin and, and Sonny talking, where um, you know we see what's going on just in Rob's life by himself, and we see you know he's had his first girlfriend, or we see that his parents are getting divorced, or et cetera, et cetera. The different things that are going on in his life. Um, that, and I also feel like I need to really expand the characters of both Rob and Sonny to make them unique. Um, so, 
Uh, the pre-planning stuff is hard to do because it doesn't feel like writing. And so it's easy to just be like, nah, I don't want to do it. Um, you're not getting a word count from it, really. You're just making an outline and making a character sheet, bio kind of a thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I really need to put my nose to the friggin' grindstone and do it. Um, so I beg for some help from everyone. Put in the comments. I see all the comments. I get an automatic email to... to to uh, tell me that someone has left a comment so I know that you've commented. Even if you comment on an ancient uh, blog post or whatever, I still get an email about it, so I, don't, I won't miss them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's uh, my show for today. Um, outline of Sunny and Gray. I'm going to do my best to work on it today, see if I can uh, expand it some more. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, the Anglecast, number three. Uh, thanks for listening. Pretty soon we'll be able to get a feed going of this thing, because it's almost to five episodes or so, and then we can submit it to iTunes. Um, so, uh, yeah, that'll make it a little easier, I suppose. You can listen to that uh, as it is. Um, so there you go. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you again next week, I guess. Bye.